Welcome everyone to this virtual DevCon workshop. I am Robert Nelson. I work for DigiKey. Today we are going to be playing around with machine chat and the Nucleo F746 board has Ethernet. And we are using uh, the XNucleo IKS01A3 MEM sensor. It's got a bunch of temperature sensors, pressure, humidity, and motion. So we are going to use a program for machine chat called Jedi One. It comes with three products right now for the Raspberry Pi, PC, and Mac. Um, we are going to use the PC version and we're going to basically run it on a little Linux desktop. And for today I'm going to actually use a premium because we're going to be doing a lot of sensors on the charts. So on the Linux server, I've already pre-downloaded this, so you get uh, basically a zip file. We're gonna unzip it. And we are gonna install and we are now gonna start it too. So now on any computer in my network, I just have to access the IP address of the server at 9123. By default, username is admin admin. I'm not going to save this and we're going to agree to the license. On first startup, it wants you to enter a bunch of information for security. We're going to be a little generic. So this is the default portal. We got our dashboard, data view, system view. This will allow us to add charts with different data. System view allows us to create like a household. By default, we have the HTTP data collector enabled. We can write rules, and then we can also do system monitoring. So for the moment, we're just gonna pause on this application because we're gonna go back to building the sensor device. And for reference, this is the board we're using. It has onboard Ethernet, which is really nice, and we can use our Arduino header, and we're actually going to program through this interface. The sensor board just plugs right in, and it's got a ton of useful sensors. So, first part of this lab that we need is actually Arduino. So we're software download, and you can just click the Windows installer or Linux, and we are going to start that install. I have pre-downloaded that just to make sure things would go well. So we're going to start the install to the default location. This will just take a moment, so we'll fast forward. Okay, the install is finished. Let's close it. Now let's start Arduino. By default, Arduino only supports um, their own boards, which are the all Arduinos. But with the help of a project from ST called STM32 Arduino, we are going to add support to a big chunk of boards for so they have a link here that we need to add. So we're going to copy and paste this. From within Arduino, we're going to go into the preferences. I like to enable compilation and upload messages, but right down here we have additional board manager URL. So we'll paste that and click OK. Now we're just going to move this over here. 
from the tools, we go to board and then board manager. Now, since we added the URL, we can actually type STM32 here to get the installer for the STM32 cores, and it supports a lot of devices. So we'll click install. And this will just take a moment as this installs. We'll probably fast forward. The installer is now finished, so we can close this. Now, as a quick test, here we're going to blink an LED on the board. So this LED over here, we're going to blink to make sure that Arduino and the STM32 software is working. So all these examples are on our forum. So the first example is going to be LED blink. We'll just copy this. And paste it in. And we're going to have to save this. So we'll call it STM32Lab. And it's building. We'll switch over to the other view so you can see the board. Um, we need to define the board. I'll click Cancel. Tools. So the board, when you do the STM32, this is a Nuclear 144 family. And the actual board is the F46. And we want the COM port, COM port 3. So we'll do the upload button again. And from here on the bottom, we can see we're actually building from the STM32 using the ARM compiler. So now it's finished, almost finished building. Now it's uploading through file system. And it's actually blinking. We'll zoom in. And so that's the LED we're toggling through that application. So let's move on to the next. We need to add a few libraries. And these are all in the forum. It's actually four different libraries. STM32 Ethernet, that's what's going to make our Ethernet connector work. We're going to use HTTP client for sending data. We're using JSON for packaging. And then we're going to add support to the Shield board. So through Arduino, we're going to add these. First one, go to Manage Libraries. We need to add STM32 Ethernet. And we're going to install it. And it's going to pop up that there's another dependency, which we want to install that too. Next, we're going to add the Arduino HTTP client. Install it. Next, we need Arduino JSON. We'll install that one. Finally, we need support for the shield. And this will bring all the different libraries for all the sensors on this board. So we're going to install them all. So we're going to move on to lab two. In this case, we're just going to enable the ethernet library and get an IP address. So the other thing we want to do is open the serial monitor and change this to 115 baud 200. And I'll go back to the forum and grab the source code. So here's lab one. The full source is here, lab two. Um, we're going to enable WIP, SCA Ethernet. We're going to basically just bring up the Ethernet and grab an IP address. Now the full lab is available here, so I'm just going to copy this 
and get the raw version and just copy paste it. So here's our new application. We're going to still use the LEDs. Ethernet's going to come up and we're going to print the local IP address. So let's build and upload this. And I'll bring the serial terminal to the front. There we go. We now have an IP address. So this device is just connected to the network. So moving on to lab three, we're actually going to control the status of this Ethernet port and show it on the LED by using the Ethernet link status option. So back to the demo pages on the forum. This will be lab three. So when the Ethernet is connected for the link status, we're going to turn the LED on and turn it off if it's unplugged. So we're going to grab this source. And this is all on our eWiki machine chat under DevCon 2020. So let's grab the raw version. We'll copy this over. And paste it. So the big change is in this loop. We are now status off, status on, turn the LED on, turn the LED off. So let's build it. And as it flashes, we get the same IP address again, but we'll actually get a status of the link whether it's on or off. So the link is on. Now I'm going to move my hands and unplug it. And now the link is off. And this LED is now off. If I plug it back in, the LED is back on. So for the rest of the application, we're going to use, we're only transmit data when the link is on. So I'll go back to the lab, which is now lab four. We are going to start reading the temperature data from the STT S751 sensor. So I'll go to the forum again. So down to lab four. So we're going to add the includes for the sensor. We're going to initialize I2C bus. We're going to create a new device sensor. Um, we only get temperature data in C, so we have to convert it to Fahrenheit, and we're going to serial print it. So let's grab this on the raw. And we're going to build it. And so we're just going to print out the temperature in Fahrenheit. We're getting it from C from the device. Here's how we initialized it, and we're using the I2C nice bus. And there's our include. So right now we're not going to change anything on the Ethernet side, but we're going to print out the temperature in my home office here. There we go. 77.8 around in this office right now. So let's add another sensor. So we're going to add the HTS-2021, which is a humidity and temperature sensor. Um, it's very similar. We have a new include, new define. We're enabling the sensor. And like the other sensor, it only comes in C, so we've got to convert it. And then we're going to print both over the UART. So let's grab this slab, grab the raw, just copy it over, paste it, and start the build. So now we have the first temperature sensor, the second one, the humidity. So we're reading it here, converting it from centigrade to Fahrenheit. And here's our new initialization for it. And the variable defines. There we go. So IP address, we have both temperature sensors, now we have humidity. So we're gonna add a third sensor for this, which adds pressure. So this is the next lab. So lab six, we're gonna use the LPS 22HH similar convention, we enable it, and we will now have three different temperature readings, humidity and pressure. So let's grab the full lab source, just raw, and I'll copy it and paste it over. So here's our humidity and pressure from the new sensor. We're doing the read, converted from C to Fahrenheit. How we initialize the sensor and the 
the structs and the include. So it's flashing it right now. So let's check out on the console. And now we have three temperatures, we got a humidity, and we got a pressure. So now we're going to convert this data into a JSON packet that we're going to later send to Machine Chat. So in the next lab, Lab 7, we're going to generate a JSON data object. We're going to use this new include. We're adding a unique ID. This is so we can tell what this data is coming from, which device. So we have a target ID. We have the humidity, temperature, pressure, temperature, temperature, and we're passing the, the objects. And we're actually going to print it out as post data. So let's grab Lab 7. Let's copy the wrong. So we're, this is our JSON object we're creating, and we're just going to dump it to the serial port so we can see what it is. So let's build it. So we have our unique name for it and our new include. Now it is uploaded. Let's check and see the data over the serial port. There we go. So we'll just kind of pause this for right now. So here is our object. That's what we're going to transmit um, to the machine chat. And it's already formatted. We have our device ID. We have the data sections. And so on the next lab, we're going to add the transmit to the server. So this is lab eight. And so we're going to add the HTTP client our server is on this address for Jedi One. Um, we're using the port 8100. We're going to initialize the library and we're going to send it as an application JSON. We got our client and we're going to send it. And then we'll read the response back to see. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to bring it over to the application, paste it, and bill it. So in here, we have our machine chat board, which is at server address 192.68.3.104. We're transmitting our report 8100. We have our library initialization. We got our post data. That's the variable we're going to use to transmit the data. We're creating our JSON object. And then we're going to use the client post to actually send the object and then read the response. So it is flashing now. And if you take a look, we should get a response of 200 if the server is receiving the data correctly. If you get a 400 or 404, the server is either not responding or the data is incorrect. And there we go. So let's disable auto scroll. Status code 200. So Machine Chat has successfully received the data. Okay, now that we have data transmitting to Machine Chat, let's take a look at some of the data in the server app. So I'll bring up the application. So we want Jedi One. And let's take care of look at the dashboard. So first let's look at the data view. We're going to add some of our data points. So we click Add Chart. For right now, let's just call this Temperature. And Chart Type would just be a line graph. And for Source, we're going to use the STM32F7IKS. And if you remember, that was actually defined right here at the top. So. If you have multiple devices, you give it unique names, easy way to find the different data types. So for the property, we now have five available. We have all the temps for each device, humidity and pressure. So let's take care, look at the STT temperature sensor. And this is in Fahrenheit and we're sending the data pretty quick. So we're just gonna change this to one and click add. And now we have a graph and it's been running for a while. Uh, one thing we could do is I can actually blow on this board. And 
And there was a little bump, but we're not seeing the good. Let's add a second graph so that's going to see it easier. So let's call temp and gauge. So chart type, uh, we'll do a gauge, minimum value of 70 to 85. Source, we're going to look at that same STT temperature, and units are in Fahrenheit. So change it to 1. And we can actually move these graphs around too. So we can move you up to the top here. That's not what I want to do, but let's see. we want them both. There we go. So 79 degrees, put my finger on there. We should see a rise, unless that's not the sensor. Let's try it. It's a different spot. There we go. So now we're seeing a good rise on it. And so the other thing we could do is we can add more graphs. So let's take a look. Um, let's be temp2. Chart type. Um, let's do an area this time. Source is our board. And we're going to use the HTTS temperature. It's another Fahrenheit. Another one. Click add. And we're going to minimize some of this though. More room. So here's the section temperature graph. And we got the label on the side, so that makes it nice. Now let's add the other one. So this will be temp three. Uh, let's do a data table. And we'll just add data sources. So property. Let's do the other temperature, which I believe is this one. Very nice. And then we can, so we got the HT, let's add LPS, another unit in Fahrenheit, add, and then we can add the other one, this is T, you can insert Fahrenheit, click add, and click add, oh. let's see, temperature, and I think this is time, but that's probably wrong. Oh, we have the labels. So this is temperature, and we'll call this one sensor. And then save. So there we go. Sensor name, temperature. Now we can drag this over here. So the ones that we have left are humidity. And we could do this as a, uh, let's do a gauge. Minimum value zero, 100, source is humidity. This is a percentage. Change it to one. So there's our humidity, we're at 41.4%. And last we have the pressure. So, then chart type. Uh, let's do a tile. I think these are HPA. And then add. So there's our this gauge. And based on certain conditions, we can do other things greater than. We change the color. So let's say it's greater than 100. Um, and then blink. And over 100, and then save. And now that tile should be active. It's over 100, and say it's less than 100. I'm just going to disable this one. We don't need that one running right now. Nope, oh, we're above so 1,000. So now it's green. We can do different alerts there. We can add icons, default. So you can have a lot of fun with these dashboards. The other thing you do here is a system view. You can actually create, um, let's see, I don't have anything ready to go. Let's do a pressure gauge. So 
So I can create a cool dashboard. Let's see, let's call this, this will be humidity, max value is 100. Oh, percent. And we can actually move and drag these around. And one of the things you can do on the background is actually draw a layout for your building or a control system. So it's a really nice way to do a quick uh, monitoring system. Let's save it. So there's a lot of customizations you can do. And you can, and we can also create rules. So for example, uh, warning, uh, low temp. So condition, let's look at this. We want the assist temperature. If it's less than or equal to say, and then we just want a number of 50. And actions you can do um, either notifications or plugin. But we're going to save this right now because you can actually create rules. So there's our rule. And our notifications, you can actually do email or SMS alerts by default. You can also run other applications. So it's a nice way to give yourself alerts if something is failing. Or your monitoring. You can also create users for other things. So if you just want users to view the data, so we got these charts going. I'll put my finger over everything again. You can see how these we're sending data pretty quick, basically once every second. So seeing changes in real time. So this is pretty much it for the live demo. Um, feel free to give a Jedi Chat a try. Um, on their tech forum, this link will stay up and I'll add more information about little things you can do. But thank you for taking your time joining us on ST DevCon Virtual Workshop. Thank you. Thank you.